it's Arcade Sunday. The next seven games featured quite heavily in the next era of my arcade life. Toward the end of the 80s and early 90s, game developers started to make more realistic games. Some of them were even based on Hollywood licenses. Here are the next seven games that made me, in no particular order. When Airwolf, the arcade game, was released on the back of the popular TV series of the same name, it was well received, in my country anyway, and we often had to queue to play it. Strange enough, even though the theme was so well known, the game did not feature in many of our other arcades. Luckily though, it had a good long run in our local arcade, so I got to really enjoy it. It will feature a unique floating play mechanic and meaningful power-ups. Great game for sure. Everyone at the time, and even now, seems to have a love-hate relationship with Ghosts and Goblins due to its inherent difficulty level. A super challenging game, and one which requires monumental concentration and constant practice to get anywhere. Ghosts and Goblins features eerie, atmospheric music to set the tone of the game and all sorts of nasty enemies hell-bent on sending you to the grave. Bond's Adventure, as you may know, is one of my personal all-time favorite platformers and had only become properly emulated under MAME from 2019 due to a custom Taito security chip being correctly decapped and dumped once and for all, finally making it possible to play the game without a major glitch. A solid game with beautiful art and a hauntingly memorable soundtrack. I often played Rygar in a large city arcade and soon became very fond of it. The colorful graphics and super sharp play mechanic made this game fun to play and the difficulty of the game ramps up just fast enough to make it challenging but very possible to get very good. I loved it then and I still love it to this day. Robocop was another Hollywood tie-in and was released around the same time as the hit movie of the same name. We were lucky enough to have this in our local arcade but again there were long wait times to get a game in due to the popularity of the theme. The game itself looks and sounds great and is a very well crafted platformer. Robocop is one of the best movie licensed games ever made, but that's just my opinion. Wonder Boy is a great game for a lot of reasons. The difficulty level of the game is actually quite easy once you learn how to hold your shoot button constantly and work out an alt shoot method of using the button which won't hamper your play. A fun filled fantasy platformer which plays amazingly, especially once you master the use of the skateboard. The last game featured in this video is none other than Bubble Bubble. We typically played Bubble Bubble in cooperative two-player mode, which was the way it was meant to be played of course. One of the most memorable parts of this game is of course the wonderful soundtrack, which plays on the loop and somehow never gets boring. Massive bonuses, point multipliers and crazy power-ups make this game super addictive. The two-player co-op is also super fun, and fights would often break out over who collected the candy staff or whose letter bubble it was. A brilliant game and one that is still very enjoyable to this day. Be sure to watch out for my other videos featuring the games that made me and let me know if you had any memories of these games. As always, have a great arcade gaming week. Arcade Sunday out.